Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBabeCrochet.com and I'm real excited to share with you today the Easy Beginners Round Dishcloth. This is so much fun to crochet. You only really need to know the single crochet for the body of this project and you also need to know how to do double crochet and chains. Um, but anyway, don't worry about that. I will show you step by step how to do this. But let me show you some of the really cool functions of this. Obviously, it's 100% cotton and this will hold up for many years in your kitchen drawer for washing dishes. I promise this is dirt sturdy enough to handle washing pots and pans and and beyond being a dishcloth, it can also protect your counters by being a hot pad for your pots just like that and also it looks pretty decorative as you use it too and if it gets dirty you just throw it in the wash and it washes really well another function if you fold this in half you can actually use it on hot surfaces to keep from being burned but do make sure you have it folded in half so this is kind of a multifunctional um, item and I'm going to show you in just a minute what you need to crochet with this I'm going to show you another um, the specific version of a cone of cotton like this that I purchased at my local Walmart store. Um, each cone, it doesn't matter what brand you have, I'm not, not sponsoring any particular brand, but each has approximately 690 to 700 yards of, of yarn. And what that means is for that $8.44 that I paid for that, I was able to crochet 11 of these. And these are definitely going to be some of my gifts to my neighbors, um, maybe friends at church, maybe school teachers, what have you, you know, somebody, uh, people on your list that you want to show them a little bit of, you know, gratitude, but maybe don't want to break the bank, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so when you make some of these, and these do crochet up in about between 40 minutes to an hour, depending on your skill, of course, it might take a, a, a true beginner, maybe an hour and a half, but still, it's a relatively short project. And you can buy this yarn in many different colors that, that can make some really beautiful things. And let me show you one other thing that you can do with these. If you fold these up and tie them on the end, you can actually make a little flower to put in a gift basket. Maybe if you want to give to somebody um, with uh, special soaps and things like that. And you can actually use these as a washcloth if you'd like, although I'd prefer maybe a little bit softer cotton for that. Well, anyway, let me go ahead and get started. And before I do, if you could please hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. And if you're not getting notifications, just hit that little bell. And if you could hit a thumbs up if you like the project, I'd really, really appreciate that. Well, let's go ahead and let me show you what else you're going to need. The yarn that I'm using for this project is 100% cotton. It's a number four, which is also considered a worsted weight or a medium weight yarn. Um, this is by Peaches and Cream. You can really use any worsted weight yarn. You're not gonna need as much as this. I actually found this at my local Walmart store. It's a huge spool. I'll be able to make many dishcloths with this particular one. Now, they also sell very small um, scans of this for under $2 that would work just the same because it's the same um, same yarn it's just a much smaller quantity and one of the small ones will also be just fine for this project well I'm highly recommending that you use a size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook and I also recommend that you have a yarn needle for hiding loose ends and because we're using a special technique of crocheting in the round, I recommend that you have a stitch marker. As you can see, this is a stitch marker that will open and close. And if you don't have a special stitch marker, but if you have an earring that looks like this, by all means use that. If you don't have an earring or a stitch marker that you can take off of a row, what you can also do is use a contrasting color piece of yarn and just mark the spot that way. It's not um, it, at the best, but this actually will make do. Okay, so you don't have to run out and buy something just for this. For those of you who don't have a stitch marker, let me show you how easy it is to mark your stitch. Suppose this is the first stitch of the round you wanna mark. 
you just pull the yarn through like this and then you can just flop it over and that just reminds you that that is the first stitch of the round. Now the disadvantage of using this is it can easily slip out but that's also an advantage so when you get to that point and let's say I'm just skipping ahead here let's say you you work a stitch here and then you are working in the first stitch of the round then you simply pull it out and then pull it back in to the stitch spot where you want this just just pull it through just like that so that you have the place marked okay I just wanted to show you that um, in case that is the method you choose to use okay before we begin I know many of you beginners out there um, don't know how to read patterns now as I go through this particular design I'm going to help you with that and I'm going to try to help you to understand kind of demystify some of these patterns. This is the key right here, is the abbreviation list. If you own a cell phone, obviously if you're watching me on a computer, you have some uh, techie experience and probably have texted in your life. Well, texting oftentimes involves using abbreviations. Um, I like to say that learning to read the abbreviations for crochet is actually easier than reading a teenager's text message. I really think that's true in a lot of cases these days. Um, but for the purposes of this design, when you see a CH in the pattern, and by the way, the pattern is available in my Love, Love Crafts store. The link to the pattern is in the description. Just look in the description of this video below and that'll take you um, to that place where you can download a copy. Well, as far as the abbreviations in the pattern goes, CH stands for chain, DC stands for a double crochet, SC for a single crochet, slip stitch written this way stands for, you guessed it, slip stitch, SP for space, and ST, and sometimes it has an S, sometimes not. It just stands for stitch or stitches. Okay, let's go ahead and we're going to read the first line and I will do this step by step and I think you'll find that it's quite easy. Okay, the first step is to read the pattern note and I've already explained this but I will read it to you. The pattern note says this is a continuous style of crocheting in the round. Mark the first stitch of each round with a movable stitch marker, something like this, or your piece of contrasting yarn. Do not join at the end of each round or turn. Okay, and as you watch me crochet this, you'll understand what this means. Okay, the very first thing to do is chain four and slip stitch to first CH, which is chain, to form a ring. Let's go ahead and do that. I have my yarn handy. And the first thing we always do when working a chain is to do a slip knot. Go ahead and pull that through, give it a tug. Make sure it's the size of the crochet hook. And now we're going to chain four. And I like to chain with the yarn coming over the back side of the hook. So one, two, three, four. Now we're going to make a slip stitch in the first chain. The first chain is right down here. The slip knot is not the first chain. Just want to be clear about that. I have had excellent questions from beginners and they say, oh, do I ch chain here? Well, absolutely not because that's we pulled that extra tight so that it would secure the project. The first chain is right here and I just go in one loop. Let me try that again. One loop right like that. Put the yarn over the hook and then we just pull the yarn through and pull the yarn through. Now we've made this very tiny circle. It looks kind of like a Cheerio or a donut seed maybe, if there were such a thing. Now let's go ahead and check our pattern. The next thing we need to do, it says round one. Now sometimes in patterns, round will be abbreviated to RND. So just, just to let you know that. For round one, it says to CH or chain one work eight SC for single crochet into center of ring. Do not join or turn, but continue to next row. Now each of the rows are going to be 
worked that way as mentioned up here in this pattern, but it is stated explicitly just in the first round and assumes that you're going to know that for the repeating rounds. Okay, so we're going to work eight after we do a chain one, work eight single crochets into the center of the ring. And at the end of this round, we're going to have eight single crochets. So let's go ahead and start that. Chain one. And then working into the hole right here, we're going to work eight single crochets. That's one. And I'll do these a little bit slower in case you've never seen the single crochet. Stick the hook in. Pull up a loop, yarn over the back, and pull through two. Now also notice that I am crocheting on top of this, this yarn strand as well. And that's just going to make it a lot easier to hide. So that's two single crochets. That's three. Again, stick the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over the back, and pull through two loops. So I'll go ahead and do this eight times. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you notice I didn't put, I did not put my um, stitch marker in the first stitch of this round. And that's primarily because it's, it's, you know, pretty obvious that this is the first stitch. But now as we go further, that's going to change. Now since we've already crocheted eight stitches over this piece here, we're going to go ahead and trim this to get rid of it. Just very carefully make sure you can trim that and get a pair, a sharper pair of scissors than the ones I just used. <laughs> okay, so now we're ready to go on for round number two. As we work through our rounds, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and check off the rounds as we go. That way, if we need to put your work down for any period of time, you can always pick it up right where you left off and you don't have to you know, try to figure out where you are. Okay, for round number two, we are going to work two single crochets or two SCs in each stitch around. And at the end of this round, we should have 16 single crochets. So let's go ahead as we do round two, but there's one thing that we're forgetting and that is go ahead and we're going to mark the first stitch. So we're going to make the first stitch of the round right there. So that's going to be our first stitch of round number two. And let's go ahead and mark the stitch so that we know where we are. And the direction said to work two single crochets in each stitch. So I've worked one and let's work another one. That's two. And then I'm going to do that in each stitch around two single crochets in each stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and work these all the way around and then I'll show you what I have when I'm done. So I just finished round two, but let's go ahead and count to verify that we have 16 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, and the last one, 16. And notice that I am counting these like V's, okay? That's how you tell the stitches. It's a lot easier than trying to, you know, figure them out from here. Okay, so now um, we've come to the place which is our first stitch. So we're now ready to look at round three and let's see what round three says. Okay, so I've checked off round two. Round three says, single crochet in the next stitch and then two single crochets in next stitch and we're going to work that all the way around. Notice the brackets here and here. Whenever you see brackets or parentheses with text inside it generally means that that is what you're going to be repeating. So inside the brackets we're going to repeat that all the way around and at the end of this round we should have 24 single crochets. So let's read this again. Single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch. Let's go ahead and do that. So I begin single crochet in the next stitch. That's just one. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the time to move my stitch marker. 
very important. And then it said two single crochets in the next. So make sure you do two in the next. One single crochet in the next stitch and then two in the next. One single crochet in the next and two in the next. Now I am speeding up my, my speed a little bit um, with my stitch because the stitch that I'm going to be working is the exact same one all the way around, just single crochets until we get to the last round. So now if I am going too fast for you on the project or in my crochet speed, I do have a solution for you. Even though the stitch that I am making is the exact same stitch that I've shown you already and at a much slower speed. But if you want to slow me down ever on the computer, there's a little gear icon that's in this section. For the left-handers, it's on this side. And if you click that, you can select playback speed and you can actually slow me down quite a bit or speed me up if you're getting bored. If you're working from a cell phone, there'll be three vertical dots up here. For the left side, left-handers, it'd be on this side. And if you click on that, it does the same thing. It will speed up or slow down the video as you select. So I hope that is helpful. Now I've come around full circle here by working the single crochet in one stitch and then two single crochets in the next. And you can see it's still a very nice circle. Um, if your project is getting super wavy at any point, you may want to just stop and check your stitch count and make sure that you are following along according to the pattern. Okay, so now we have finished round three. Let's see what round four has for us. For round four, it says to single crochet in the next two stitches. In other words, one single crochet in the next stitch, one crochet, single crochet in the next stitch, and then two single crochets in the next stitch. I know that may sound kind of confusing, but when it says single crochet, that means one single crochet in the next two stitches, and then two single crochets in the next stitch. And you see the parentheses or the brackets here. That means that that's what you're going to repeat all the way around. At the end of this round, we should have a total of 32 single crochets. And notice that I did check off round number three so that I know that I'm on round number four. So let's go ahead and do the first stitch of the round, which is in the same place as where that stitch marker was. So whenever you do a stitch where the stitch marker was from the previous round, go ahead and take it out and mark that stitch that you just completed. Okay, so that's one stitch and then one stitch in the next single crochet. Now we're going to work two in the next one, two, and that is going to be a repeat all the way around one single crochet in that stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, and then two in the next stitch. So go ahead and work that all the way around. One single crochet in that stitch, one single crochet, see one, two, one single crochet in the next two stitches, and then two single crochets in the next stitch. Okay, let's take a look at round number five. Round number five says to single crochet in the next three stitches, two single crochet in the next stitch, and you see that is inside the brackets, and we're going to repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, we should have 40 single crochets. Okay, now we're ready to start round number five. Let's go ahead and work a single crochet in that first stitch where that stitch marker is, and then we're going to move our stitch marker just signifying that that is the first stitch of the round. And the instruction, instructions again said to single crochet, one single crochet in the first three stitches. So that's one, that's two, three. So one single crochet in three stitches, one, one, and one, or you just count one, two, three. And then the next stitch, we put two single crochets in the next. And that's going to be the repeat all the way around for round five. One there, one single crochet in the next, one single crochet in the next, so that we have one, two, three stitches, and then two in the next. So go ahead and work that all the way around. Now let's take a look at round number six. 
I've checked off round five that I've just completed. Now it says to single crochet. Again, it's inside the brackets. I know I'm repeating myself, um, and that is a, red is a redundancy, but again, this is a learning project, so I'm hoping that, that really serves you in the long run. SC or single crochet in the next four stitches. Two single crochets in the next stitch, and we're gonna work this around and we should, we should have 48 single crochets at the end of this round. Let's go ahead and do so that. So we single crochet in the first four stitches, but let's go ahead and do the first stitch, which has that stitch marker. Let's go ahead and take that out and put it back in. I know this seems problematic maybe to some of you, but believe me, this is going to save you so much time in trying to figure out where you are. And um, it's so much more difficult to understand where you left off and so forth when you're working in the round like this and this stitch marker is going to just really be um, really be a good thing to use all right so that was one stitch that counts as one and that's two three four so there's four stitches that each have one single crochet and then the next will have two now let me show you something else that will kind of help guide you as well. Notice that when you put the two stitches in that one stitch, that if you look back at the previous rounds, this is the second of the two single crochets where you had two stitches in. Okay, I don't know if that's going to show up on the video. So I put two stitches here and then in the previous row you have a round rather, you had two stitches in the same place and we're working these two stitches in the second one. I don't tell you that so that you only look for that. I, I don't want you to um, do that because that's a little difficult to see, but just in case you're counting and you're not sure. So we have one, two, three, four stitches with one single crochet and then two in the next. I'll go ahead and repeat that for you one more time. One, two, three, four and then two stitches or two single crochets in that next space. So go ahead and work that all the way around. Now that I've finished this round, let me show you at the end of each round that should end at the stitch right before the first stitch of the previous round. Now if you are running out of stitches or if the multiples are ending in a different place, then you probably are a little bit off on your stitch count. Okay, that's not the end of the world. You can just continue on from where you are, or you know, if you were at the very beginning of the project, it might be a good idea to start again. But um, I just wanted to point that out that when you end the round, you should end in the stitch right before the first stitch of the round. Now we're ready to go on to the next round. For round number seven, and again inside the brackets here is what we're going to be repeating all the way around. Single crochet in the next five stitches. Two single crochets in the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that around. At the end of this round we should have a total of 56 single crochets. So let's go ahead and start round seven. Again with a single crochet in that first stitch where the stitch marker is. Go ahead and take the time to move your stitch marker to the stitch we just made. And we are going to crochet in the first five stitches with one single crochet. So that's one we just completed. Two, three, four, and five. And you're going to do two single crochets in the next. By now you should be seeing that there is a pattern that is being established with these multiples as each, as we go through each round, we are adding stitches. And that's pretty much the way this project is going to play out um, through, I believe it's 13 rounds. So one, two, three, four, five, and then two in the next stitch. So go ahead and finish round seven. Now we're ready to begin round number eight and inside the brackets here single crochet in the next six stitches 
two single crochets in the next and we're going to do that all the way around and at the end of this round we should have 64 single crochets. Again, to start this round we're going to single crochet in the first stitch and go ahead and move that stitch marker so that we know this is the first stitch of the round. Again, I know I'm repeating myself, but this is in an effort to serve you. Okay, so we're going to single crochet in the first six stitches. So that was one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then two in the next stitch. One, two, and I noticed that I did put those two stitches in the same place, which is the second of the two stitches from the previous round. So I know I am on target as I go. So one single crochet in the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then two in the next stitch. Okay, so go ahead and work that repeat all the way around. We're making progress now. We're up to round number nine. And inside the brackets, we find single crochet in the next seven stitches, two single crochets in the next. We're gonna work that around. At the end of this round, we should have a total of 72 single crochets. Let's go ahead and do that. So beginning round number nine, go ahead, single crochet in that first stitch. Go ahead and remove the stitch marker and put it in the first stitch of the round yet again. Time well spent, I promise you. And we're going to do single crochets in the first seven stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five. six and seven and then two single crochets in the next stitch and we're going to do that all the way around I'll do that repeat one more time for you one single crochet in the next six I'm sorry in the next seven stitches so that's one two three four five six seven and then two single crochets in that next stitch. So go ahead and work that repeat all the way around. Now that brings us to round number 10 and inside the brackets we find single crochet in the next eight stitches and two single crochets in the next stitch around. At the end of this round we should have a total of 80 single crochets. So let's go ahead and work round number 10. Just like the other rounds, we begin with a single crochet in that first stitch where we find our stitch marker. Go ahead and move that, marking that as our first stitch of the round. And we're going to single crochet in the first eight stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then two single crochets in the next. I should have mentioned this earlier, but whenever you work two stitches in the same stitch, we also call that an increase. Uh, that is not in the written pattern that I am using today, but if you ever see an abbreviation for increase, you guessed it, it's INC. Let me go ahead and show you um, this repeat one more time, single crochet in the next eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches, and then two single crochets in the next one, two. So go ahead and work that all the way around. Now we're ready to begin round number 11 and inside the brackets it says to single crochet in the next nine stitches, two single crochets in the next stitch and we're going to do that all the way around. 
the end of this round we should have a total of 88 single crochets. So we begin round 11 in the same way. We single crochet in that first stitch which had our stitch marker. And let's go ahead and move that. Go ahead and stick it in there. The first stitch of the round. And we're going to single crochet in the first nine stitches, so that counts as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and then two single crochets in that next stitch or a single crochet increase. So that's what we're going to do. So go ahead and work that all the way around. One single crochet in each of the next nine stitches and then two in the next. That brings us to round number 12. And inside the brackets we read single crochet in the next 10 stitches, two single crochet in the next stitch, and we're going to work that repeatedly around. And at the end of this round we should have a total of 96 single crochet. And this is going to be the last round where we actually have increases. So let's go ahead and work round number 12. We begin in the same way by working that first single crochet in that first stitch of the last round. Let's go ahead and replace our stitch marker to identify the first stitch of this round. And we're going to single crochet in the first 10 stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then two single crochets in that next stitch. And that is your repeat all the way around. One single crochet in each of the next ten stitches and then two single crochets in the next. This brings us to round number 13, where we are to single crochet in each stitch around, and we have 96 single crochets at the end. Notice that there should be no increases from the last round that we just finished to this round that we're working on now. So just one single crochet in each stitch around. So as we begin round 13, we're still going to move our stitch marker. Go ahead and work in that first stitch of the round and let's go ahead and label this and we are simply going to just work one single crochet in every stitch around no increases this time around so go ahead and and finish that go ahead and finish this all the way around okay now that we finished working this all the way around. We just completed round number 13. Um, there are two options for you. I have an extra round which actually adds a very beautiful decorative round. I will show you how to do that. But if you find that too difficult, what you can do is you could end the project here simply by going into the next project, I'm sorry, the next stitch and working a slip stitch just like this and then working another chain, giving it a tug, and then you would clip the yarn and then simply hide that loose thread. But let me show you a better way that's a little more decorative. Um, now you notice that we did come to the first stitch of the round. We can go ahead and take that out. Okay, now we've come to the last round and you can see I have a little, a little typo here that is corrected in the final copy for round 14. Notice that we have brackets here, but then we also have parentheses inside the brackets. So whenever you see a situation like this, you read what's in the parentheses and then it'll give you the instructions right outside as to what to do. So single crochet, chain three, double crochet in next stitch, and then skip the next two stitches. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. That's what we're going to do. And let's finish the sentence. After we finish going all the way around, we're going to join with a slip stitch to first stitch of round, fasten off, I'll show you what that means, 
hide loose strands, and I'll demonstrate that in the end as well. But right now, what we're, we're concerned with is the repeat that's going around single crochet, chain three, double crochet, all of that in next stitch. Let's go ahead and work round 14. Okay, so we're going to work, starting in that first stitch of the round, a single crochet, chain three, and then a double crochet all in the same space. Let me show you how that's the single crochet, chain three, and double crochet all in the same space. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, and we're going to repeat that again. Single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, and I'll do a slower double crochet in case some of you have never seen this. You wrap the hook, stick the hook in your stitch, pull up a loop, you should have three loops on your hook, yarn over the back, pull through two, yarn over the back, pull through two more, and that's a double crochet. So you can see this double crochet kind of falls to the side as I skip two, the skip one, two, and then I do this again. Single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, and double crochet. I'll do one more for you. Skip two. Now for the repeat. Single crochet, chain three, and I'll do a slower double crochet. Yarn over, stick the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you can see how the double crochets fall along those two skip stitches and it leaves a nice little scallop. And what's really nice about these little scallops is it's not just decorative, but it can also be very functional. If you want to hang up this dishcloth to dry, you can just hang it on one of these little loops. Okay, hang it on a hook if you need to. So it's, it's not just beauty, but it's also function. So I'll do this one more time. Skip the next two stitches. Single crochet, chain three, and double crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way around and then I'll show you how to join at the end of this round. At the end of the round, we're going to skip the last two stitches, one, two, and we're going to join with a slip stitch in that first single crochet of the round, slip, stitch, and now we're going to give it a chain, give it a nice tug, and you're going to take your sharp scissors and cut a generous strand just like this. Go ahead and give that a nice tug. Now I'm going to teach you how to hide this loose thread. I'm going to have you turn it to the back side and we're going to thread this right like that. And this is why you leave a slightly longer thread so that it makes it easy to thread into this needle. And we're going to bring this down into the stitches. This is um, the back side. Okay, got that. Pull it down kind of kind of nice and snug here. And you can really run it under any of these stitches however you'd like. And the goal is to just hide the yarn thread amongst the stitches. And seeing that it's a, a dishcloth, it really doesn't matter nearly as much as it would if you know if it were something that you're going to wear but you do want to do a good job and you need to learn how to do do something well on the little projects like this and it'll just give you skills for later on for the larger project so we're going to go ahead and clip this very close to our work but make sure that we don't clip the actual stitches if you give a little tug like that then it kind of disappears into your work never to be seen again so let's go ahead and spread this out flat it's very easy to do with your hands with this cotton. It's very pliable. And we are done with our round dishcloth. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please hit that thumbs up and by all means subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the other projects that I have coming your way. And I do have quite a few coming, um, both for the holiday season and after. God bless. Bye-bye.